OK, let's continue our progress through this reading on the overview of asset allocation by introducing you to the idea of an economic balance sheet. So if we think back to the start of the investment process, uh, again, we would have covered this in the individual wealth management and institutional wealth management readings. Um, one of the most important bits of information that the, um, the investment advisor has to ascertain from the client is how much wealth they've got at the moment. And you know, if, if the client needs to have $10 million in retirement to fund their excessive jet set retirement lifestyle, then we need to know how much wealth they've got right now uh, to invest. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to work out what required returns uh, are, are, are needed over the next uh, so however many years. So a traditional balance sheet is a set of assets and liabilities. So the client might have lots of shares in an employer. Uh, they might have a load of cash from an inheritance, you know, all the traditional uh, sorts of ideas of, of, uh, of wealth. And of course, liabilities, things like mortgage debts and um, you know, other obligations that they're gonna have to meet. But an important part of the investment information gathering uh, process, if you like, is looking at extended assets and liabilities. These are the sorts of things that wouldn't be uh, captured on a traditional balance sheet, but they are very relevant to the investment process. So we're gonna work out what these are. We're gonna just establish what extended assets and liabilities are. Um, assets, first of all, again, these wouldn't appear normally on a, on a balance sheet for an individual uh, or a company because they haven't happened yet. Look at this, present value of expected earnings. Okay, so uh, speaking personally, i am hopefully got a couple of decades to go before I retire. Um, I'm expecting to earn some money over that period. And if I discount those future earnings down to present value, that's effectively an asset that I've got. You know, touch wood, uh, I'm going to be able to, to realise those assets or realise those earnings uh, over the next couple of decades. Um, that would be known as our human capital. Okay, so human capital is the present value of your expected future income. Um, how about pension income in retirement? That's another uh, source of, of an extended asset uh, that would appear on an extended balance sheet. For institutions, it's a little bit different. Uh, so things like royalties, if the, if the company or the institution owns uh, a copyright or a trademark or a license and they're expected to get some income in from that, uh, then the present value of that future income stream uh, would be uh, an extended asset. Likewise, if they have uh, things like minerals, you know, natural resources, um, the present value of future income that they're going to uh, they're going to glean uh, from, those, from those natural resources. So you can see there's a common theme here with these extended assets. It's present value of future income streams. Okay, you're not going to be recognising that on a traditional balance sheet, but it is an important part of the information gathering process for an investment manager. Okay, well, if we're going to be recognising the present value of future income as an extended asset, it's only fair, unfortunately, to recognise some extended liabilities as well. So whereas with individuals, you're expected to um, earn a certain amount of money over the next X years, well, we're also expected to spend a certain amount of money over the next X years. So the extended liability section of the balance sheet would include the present value of your expected future spending, your consumption. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to make your extended assets or extended balance sheet look a little bit better, you would cut down on your future spending. Uh, I think my uh, children would have something to say about that personally. So that's, uh, that's certainly pushing up my uh, expected future consumption. Uh, for institutions, again, you'd expect the, the source of the extended liabilities to be a bit different, and they are. Um, present value of expected expenses is still the same sort of principle, uh, but we've got a good example here. Grants that a foundation is going to make. Um, future pension payouts would be another one. Uh, so pension payments that are going to come out of the pension fund uh, if that's the, uh, the institution uh, that we're looking at. So hopefully you're comfortable with the, the concept here of these extended assets and liabilities. Extended assets on the one hand, present value of future income. Extended liabilities, present value of future expenditure um, and outgoings. Okay, now let's bring it all together onto an extended balance sheet. Okay, so on this slide here, we've got uh, basically a traditional balance sheet on the top half. You know, nothing wrong here, so assets on the left, liabilities on the right, there's a couple of traditional assets, so domestic equities, this would be for a, an institution, so they're holding 400, well, the units aren't noted there, are thousands, millions, uh, they've got 400 of uh, domestic equity, so in shares, and then 250 uh, in real estate, so the total of their traditional assets there is 650. Okay, on the right hand side, on the downside of the balance sheet, they've got short term borrowings and mortgage obligations. Okay, there we go. So 300 uh, is our traditional balance sheet. So the net assets there, 350. But let's before we say that's the net worth, let's add those extended assets and liabilities down here. There's some income. 
expected royalties from a license, a copyright, a trademark, uh, whatever it is. And then liabilities. Okay, they've got um, liabilities, might be pension payouts, uh, and there's 300 on the downside there. So if we add up all of that, the total economic asset, so economic is financial plus extended, gets to economic assets. Uh, likewise, on the right-hand side, financial plus extended gets to economic liabilities. So economic assets, 800. Economic ass uh, liabilities, 600. So the net worth, and if we think about this for, uh, as a set of accounts for a moment, that would be the equity uh, of, the, of the institution, okay, the, the overall net assets, including the economic um, uh, extended assets and liabilities. Uh, the net worth there uh, would be 200, which, of course, makes the balance sheet balance. Um, and it's got a little bit worse then, hasn't it? If you just look at the financial situation, the net assets was 350. But once you take into account the fact their extended uh, liabilities are greater than the extended assets, then it's going to make that net worth position just a little bit less, uh, less positive uh, for this business.